Glory to God. Lift that Bible up and say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I never, never, never doubt this Word because it is the Word of God. I have ears to hear, heart to receive, so teach to me the Word of God. Say, I believe it. I receive it right now in my life in Jesus' name. And we say amen. amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We're talking about a healthy personality. This is part two of a healthy personality. We're going to get into Jabez today. But to begin with, if you'll turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over all the cattle, all the earth, every living, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God created us and imparted to us our identity, imparted to us authority, imparted to us purpose in life. God invested into us spiritual life. God invested into us relationship with a loving heavenly Father. God invested into us our identity, our authority, our purpose, and then we gave it all away. The devil came against our identity. devil came against our purpose. devil came against our authority. And we just handed it over to him. We believed the lie. In Adam, we believed the lie. Jesus came to restore our identity, our authority, and our purpose. Someone say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And God gave us identity, authority, and purpose. We gave away our identity, authority, and purpose. Jesus came to restore our identity, our authority, and our purpose. Glory to God. And our identity is one of the most precious things that you have. And we find ourselves in the Word of God. We find ourselves in a, in a, kingdom, sound, in a kingdom sense of who we are in Christ Jesus. That's who I am. That's who you are. That's my identity. And we find our purpose in the Lord. We find our authority in the Lord. And it is crucially important then that we have a healthy personality by knowing who we are in the Lord. It's important that we have a healthy personality because an unhealthy personality undermines our purpose. The best day of your life is when you realize why you are on planet earth what your God-given assignment is, what your purpose in life is. That is the best day of your life. Let me tell you, I went through much of my life not knowing what my purpose in life is. When I heard the voice of God and heard the call into the ministry that I was called to preach this word, it changed everything in my life. Once you discover your purpose, life has meaning. Life is fulfilled. There is a reason for living. A lot of people go through life wondering, why am I here? What's the meaning to life? Well, God is trying to reveal to each and every one of us what the meaning to life is, and we find it in our purpose, our God-given purpose, not some purpose that you made up or, or mom or grandma gave to you, but the purpose that you are designed by God to have. Glory to God. Each and every one of us has a God-given purpose. And the church said, amen and amen. And a healthy personality in, uh, undergirds that purpose, that God-given purpose. An unhealthy personality that is flesh-driven undermines 
that God-given purpose. But if you've got the mind of Christ, oh, praise the Lord. If you've got the anointing of the Holy Ghost, oh, praise the Lord. If you have a biblical worldview, if you know who you are in Christ Jesus, if you have a healthy personality, then that's when your purpose prospers. That's when meaning prospers in your life. You got to know who you are in the Lord. You got to have your identity. And Jesus came back to, to make sure that we knew who we are in the Lord. Knowing who you are in Christ, knowing your identity is constantly uh, reaffirmed by the Lord and is constantly under attack by the devil. Now, I want to look at a specific case here because it is ancient in Scripture, but it is pertinent to our everyday life. So turn with me to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. It's the story of Jabez. It's the prayer of Jabez. The devil is constantly attacking your identity. If he can get you to question your identity, he can undermine your personality. If he can undermine your personality, he can undermine your purpose. He can keep you wandering aimlessly through this life. But once you discover your God-given purpose, you are on a track towards victory. And as soon as you identify with with who you are in Scripture, who God assigned you to be. This is why, well, I'm not going to go there. Turn with me to uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in much pain. Jabez means sorrow or pain. She bore him in pain, so she named him Pain. Verse 10, and Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil, that I might not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Now, there is some thought. We know very little about Jabez. We think a city was probably named after him at some point, but uh, the city of pain, wouldn't that be a city you'd want to live in? <laughs> Jabez was named pain because his mother had a painful experience regarding him. It says that she experienced pain in birth, but scholars believe there has to be more to it than that because Everybody, I'm just speaking for the ladies now, childbirth is a painful process. And all the ladies said, amen. amen. And none of y'all named your child pain, did you? So there's, there's probably more to the story than that. There was something to do with the situation, the circumstance surrounding the birth of this child in his mother's life that she saw it as a, a miserable experience, as a painful, as a sorrowful experience. And she shrouded her child with what she was experiencing. So she took her her uh, great pain and sorrow of her life, and she projected it upon her child so that his identity from then on would be pain and sorrow. You say, that's a terrible thing. You say, that is uh, criminal. That's a crime right there that, that a parent would project upon their child the identity of pain. Yeah. Every time she sees the child pain, anytime anybody sees the child pain, there's something wrong with you, your pain, your sorrow. There, there's a, a something that's off a, uh, regarding this child, pain. And every time the child thought about himself, wrote his name down, called his name, every time the child identified himself, I'm a pain. I'm a pain to my mother. Notice his prayer, don't let me cause pain. That's all he thought about was 
I'm a pain. I'm sorrowful. You say, that's terrible. But that's not uncommon because we get labeled all the time. We get labeled by other people all the time. We get labeled with things that we have to carry through our life. Hey, stupid. Are you crazy? Only an idiot would do that. How dumb can you be? Are you a moron? Or as Bugs Bunny would say, maroon? Are you, is something wrong with you? And you know what? If you hear it enough, it starts to stick. And it starts to affect your identity, how you think about yourself, how you see yourself. She inflicted him with a false identity, but that happens all the time as a child growing up. Because the law of belief says that which you sincerely, truly believe in your heart is what you become and what you attract to yourself. Jesus put it this way in, in Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believeth those things which he saith shall come to pass. If you believe it enough, it's going to come to pass. If you believe the devil's lie, the devil's lie will come to pass and manifest in your life. You say, but it's a lie. It doesn't matter. If you believe it, you attract it to you. If you believe it, you become it. Solomon said in Proverbs 24, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you believe it, that's what you become. If you believe it, that's what you attract to you. It's called the law of attraction and the law of belief. You attract it to you, and it just reaffirms, 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 reaffirms that you are pain, that you are sorrow, that nobody wants to see you coming. And it's a lie. Maybe the devil's lie, but it becomes your truth. And it becomes who you are. There was a young man that took a college entrance exam. And on that particular scholastic aptitude test, he scored a 95. He got the test results back 95. He thought that was a, his IQ. He didn't understand the numbering system. He thought that was his IQ, and he was so surprised when the university let him in. He says, how is this that they would let me in with an IQ of 95? But, and so he got into the university the first semester. He failed every class that he took. And the guidance counselor called him in and said, what, what is going on here? He says, well, what would you expect from someone with an IQ of 95? He says, no, wait a second. Where did you get that idea? He said, I saw my score on the test that I took, 95. That's my IQ. He says, that's not your IQ. You're in the 95th percentile of all the students in the United States of America. You're in the very top of all the students. He made straight A's from then on. Because what you believe becomes who you are. And if you believe you can't, you won't. And if you believe you never will, you never will. But if you believe what the Word says about you, if you believe what the Lord says about you, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. This is why we have to affirm ourselves in Christ all the time, every single day, we have to get up in the morning and affirm who we are in Christ. I am who the Bible says I am. I have what the Bible says I have. I can do what the Bible says I can do. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. I'm an overcomer. I'm not the overcomer. You know what? When God brought Israel out of Egypt, he started affirming to them, you're my nation. You're my called out people. I love you. My name is on you. You are my nation 
And he just affirmed over and over and over again, call on me, I will answer. I will be with you. My strong right arm will undergird you. Come on. And, and God just kept affirming to them, you're mine, you're mine, you're mine. He's, he just kept telling them, let me tell you who you are. Let me tell you how unique you are. Let me tell you how precious you are. You're the apple of my eye. You're chief among nations. You may be a small nation, but you are a giant in responsibility and power and anointing and unction. You're my nation, God says. This is why we have to affirm who we are in Christ all the time and just keep telling ourselves, I'm the head, I'm not the tail, I'm the overcomer not the overcome. I'm more than a conqueror. And, and the more that you tell yourself that, the more you push out all the negative junk that has been spoken over you your entire life. There's been so much negative, and a lot of it we speak ourselves. But you can only think one thought at a time. It's called thought replacement. You can only think one thought at a time. And if you're used to thinking negative thoughts about yourself, you can replace those negative thoughts with a positive thought, with a biblical thought about yourself. And so your mind would want to go to a negative thought about yourself, and that's when you do a thought replacement exercise. You affirm who you are in Christ Jesus. Your mind says, I can't. But then the Bible says, no, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Glory to God. <laughs> the Bible says I'm going to fail. And the, and the, I mean, the, the flesh says I'm going to fail. But the Bible says everything I put my hand to will prosper. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thought replacement. Everybody say thought replacement. When you do thought replacement, it should be a, a thought in the present tense, I am, who the Bible says I am. It should be a positive thought, I am, who the Bible says I am. It should be in present tense, I am, I have, I can do. And it should be personal. It should be about me. I'm talking about me now. I am. Not I'm going to be, but I am. I am. <laughs> You speak, you speak over yourself now what you want to see, but you claim it now. You speak the things that are not as though they are. And so you say, I am. I'm the healed of the Lord. I'm the prosperous of the Lord. You speak it now, and you speak it positive, And you frame it in the sense of a positive statement. That way, your subconscious takes that message, and it just keeps playing it, playing it, playing it, playing it in the background all the time. Your subconscious never turns off. God gave us this mechanism that works in the background of our mind all the time, and it just reaffirms and reaffirms and reaffirms that I'm loved by God, and I'm a, I have a mission by God, and I have purpose in this life, and I'm going to win glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you want to keep it personal, you want to keep it present tense, and you want to keep it positive, glory to God. Well, Jabez was determined to reverse course. And Jabez had been named by his mother, your pain. You got to do something about that. If mom names you pain, you got to do something about that. So Jabez prays. It's called the prayer of Jabez. Go back again to 1 Chronicles 4. Now, Jabez... Let's go to verse 10. Jabez called on God, saying, Oh, that you would bless me. Everybody say, bless me. Bless me. And enlarge my territory. Say, enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. And that your hand would be upon me. Yes. Say, your hand would be upon me. Yes. And that you would keep me from evil. Yes. That I may not cause pain. Some of your versions will say that pain does not come upon me, that I do not attract pain to myself. So Jabez is a man of honor, 
more honorable than his brothers. He believed what God said in him. God, bless me. Oh, that you would bless me and you would enlarge my territory. Now, that word bless means to bless abundantly. It, it means that I'm not looking for the little bit, the little sprinkle. He said, I want my life blessed. And this is how we should pray to God to bless us. Lord, I'm looking for the abundant blessing in my life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life abundantly. I want to be blessed in every area of my life. Come on, church. I want to be blessed going out. I want to be blessed coming in. I want to be blessed in my family, in my marriage, in my ministry, in every area of my life. Bless, bless, bless. That means God bestows a benefit upon us. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. God bless me indeed. Amen. So he's asking for the greater. He's asking for the bigger. He's asking for the abundant to be manifest in his life. And then he says, God, enlarge my territory, enlarge my realm of influence. Listen, we should be looking to take ground, not give ground. We should be looking to have a greater influence, a greater impact. God, enlarge my territory. Remember in Isaiah, it says, enlarge the place of your tent, Isaiah 54 and 2. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Spare not. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stake. In our mindset, it should be one of growing influence, growing impact, growing effect in our community. Lord, enlarge my tent. Why? Because before, people were running from me. All they saw was pain. But now, Lord, enlarge me, bless me, and enlarge my territory. When people see me coming, they're going to say, here comes the blessing. Hallelujah. Here comes the blessing. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Enlarge my territory. Stretch me. Increase my influence. Increase my blessing. And then he prays that your hand would be upon me. That means the open hand of God would bless me. We see this as the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the hand of God upon our lives. When the Holy Spirit comes upon our lives, everything changes because now you're operating in the anointing and not in your own strength. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your Spirit, says the Lord. We can do a lot of things in our own strength, but we should do all things in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It said of the Lord that Jesus was anointed by God he was anointed by God, went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is the hand of God upon your life. If you are going to fulfill God's purpose in your life, you need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Say, I need, I need. the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. And then he prayed that you would keep me from evil, that my heart would be right, that I would walk in love. Glory to God. That every area of my life would be pleasing unto you, Lord. That you would keep me from evil. That I wouldn't grieve the Holy Spirit. And then he finally says, and that I might not cause pain. He says, I was named pain. I don't want to cause any pain. I want a new identity. I want a new pathway through life. That's one of being blessed. That's one of having expanded influence. That's one of being anointed by the Holy Spirit. That's one of being kept from evil so that my heart is pleasing before you all the time. Lord, I don't want to cause pain. I want to be a healer. I want to be a blesser. I want to be the joy that people see. When they see me coming, I want to be a joy unto them. Lord, don't let me cause pain. And the prayer ends up on verse uh, where God says, and God granted him what he requested. He said, Lord, bless me. That's a good prayer, isn't it? Yeah. He said, Lord, enlarge my territory. That's a good prayer. Isn't that a good prayer? He said, Lord, put your hand upon me. Isn't there something powerful when you feel a hand of a friend upon your shoulder and you know you're not alone? You don't have to do it in your own strength, 
but there's someone to help you get through this life. That's the Holy Ghost putting His hand right on your shoulder. Put your hand upon me. Keep me from evil. Help me to be a blessing, an agent of blessing and not an agent of pain. Jabez prayed. He called upon God saying, and we're going to do this. If you can put up 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. And we're all going to read this together as we close service this morning. Everybody, if you would read it out loud with me. One, two, three, read. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory that your hand would be upon me, that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Did you get anything out of this today? Praise the Lord. You have an identity in Christ. You have authority in Christ. You have a purpose in Christ. And when we undermine all of that is when we begin to question who we are in Christ. When we get confused about our authority, I mean our identity. Didn't, didn't the devil, when he come to tempt Jesus, didn't he say, if thou be the Son of God, turn rock into bread or cast yourself down from the tower if you are always questioning identity this is what the devil does with us as well are you really a child of the living God are you really born again are you really anointed by the Holy Spirit are you really an overcomer are you really the healed of the Lord are you really more than a, a, a conqueror more than a, a um, a conqueror, praise the Lord. Are you really that? And we say, oh, yes, I am. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Let me pray over you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. I will bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His has done great things. He, he has, has done, done great things. things. Yes, he has. He, he has, has done I say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And we say amen. God bless you. See you Wednesday night.